Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is one of many released every month, totaling over 80 episodes so far. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud for your convenience, a process that incurs costs. To help cover these expenses, you might hear some advertisements throughout the episode. While we do retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may also encounter modern ads, which help keep the lights on. If you prefer an ad-free experience, we offer a couple options. You can listen to the episodes on YouTube, where they don't include the audio ads, although YouTube may provide their own ads on their platform. Alternatively, you can also support us by becoming a patron on our Patreon page. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, otrwesterns.com slash donate. I do want to emphasize that we are committed to providing this content to you for free, but also we have to be transparent about the financial realities to bringing this to you. To those of you who are already supporting us, we extend our heartfelt thanks. Your contributions make it possible for us to continue doing what we love. And as a final note, I did want to mention one last thing. If you are paying for a service, let's say like Audible, and you're listening to this show on that site, they do not provide any financial or monetary means to this podcast. We provide it to them as a way for you to be able to listen, but they don't help us in any way. So again, thank you to everybody who's already supporting. And those of you who want to support us in the future, I deeply appreciate it. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger. Original air date is May 26, 1947. And the title is the Hooded Quartet. Let's get into it. Fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. That go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hey! Jake Wattles, owner of the cafe in Canfield, was a huge man with a great shock of hair. His small, close-set eyes watched the customers 
but he didn't notice four men who came through the bat wing doors until they started shooting. In the hush that followed the gunfire, Jake saw that the four men wore hoods. All right, keep him covered, boys. Any man throws, let him have it. Right. Now, this is no hold-up, gents. Nobody will get hurt if he minds his own business. Keep your hands from your eyes and back away from that bar. Right. Not you, Jake. You stand just where you are. If it's another hold-up, what is it? You'll find out pronto. Step this way and keep your hands raised. Who are you? Who are your pards? Who we are don't concern you. Hey, I want to know what this is. Just hook... call us friends, the four fellas you framed once. Four fellas you had sent to jail on a trumped-up lie in charge of murder. That'll be good enough. Well, what are you talking about? Forget already? Well, it's been a couple of years. Maybe I ought to freshen up your memory some. You remember Pete Stevens, yes. Bill Kendall, Judd Wayne, Todd Lang? Remember them? It's a lie. I never framed them. They had a fair trial. Shut up. No, you've got to listen. Ask anybody if they weren't guilty. Ask Nate Bender. He jailed them. Or ask Judge Powers. It was him that gave them the trial. Anybody would tell you it was all fair and square. We know our friends weren't guilty, Jake. As for Nate and the judge and, and that lion killer, Hawk Marlin, that you had testify against our friends, they'll all be getting theirs, too. Now, wait a minute. You just I... happen to be first on our list. All right, start walking. Out the front way. The first yell out of you, you're stopping late. No, on your you. way. Come on, boys, back out. I'll watch this pole cat. Right, the rest of you gents stay here. Don't follow or try to get Jake back. Just keep out of what don't concern you. All right, quick, boys. Who's that? Lead the way. Hey, let me go, fellas. I'll pay Keep you. your mouth shut and climb on that horse. Get moving. But Hit I... leather. You won't get away with this. Oh, no, we won't. Get him up. Come on, Silver. Follow our way. Come on, Lum. Follow us. Get up there. It's a masked man. With a red skin. Taking Jake. Shoot, you fool. Shoot him down. We've roused the town. we got to get out of here. We're all gone. We missed him. It can't be helped. we got to ride. It would be caught. Yes. Get, eh? get back to camp. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Those four fellas were haunted. What's the hold up? Who was that masked hombre? I've seen it all, fellas. Seen every bit of it. Those four hooded gents took Jake from the cafe. Then the mask army and the engine came from nowhere, and they got Jake. What's happened to make Jake popular, sir? The hooded men raced to their hideout several miles from town. There they reined up. Ho, 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 boy. Easy. <laughs> Todd, you take the horses and pick them where they can graze. Pile the saddles over against that tree. And get these hoods off. Right. <clears throat> Come on, you critters. Yeah. Come on. Get up. Come on. Bill, I'd give plenty to know who that masked man and the Indian were that butted into our play. You got any ideas? No, I haven't, Judd. You ever see that pair of four feet? Not that I remember. And you... Huh? I don't know. There's something about them I should play. See what? I can't seem to do it, though. Looked to me as if they'd planted themselves right there, waiting for us to come out of the cafe. So they must have known beforehand what we were planning. I'd have sworn we came here without anybody knowing it. Yeah. yeah this would look funny to me. So we missed out on the first try. We can wait. We got time. Plenty of time. The next try, we won't miss. Bill, you made one bad mistake back there at the cafe. Huh? What's that? You named the four we're out to get. Everybody in the cafe heard you and <laughs> warned the men we want. That's why I did it. Huh? Now that they know we're after them, they can spend some time worrying about it. That just suits me fine. But what if they clear out? They won't. How do you know? If Jake gets away from that masked man, he won't clear out because everything he owns is right back here in Canfield. Yeah, that's so. Hawk Marlin won't. Because this is just about the only part of the country where he's not wanted by the law. Besides the fact that he's drawing good wages from Jake. He's the one that's going to be hard to handle. He's lightning with a six-shooter. Sheriff Nate Bender and old man Powers is the judge. There's sure no danger of them leaving. But all the time, they'll know we're somewhere around. They'll know that sooner or later, we're going to get him. <laughs> and between now and then, they're going to spend plenty of sleepless nights.
The Lone Ranger and Toto had taken their prisoner south of Canfield. Outside the town, they circled and rode to a small, well-concealed camp within a mile of the hooded men. Jake Wattles was closely watched as he sat beside a small fire. Look here, stranger. I appreciate what you've done. If it hadn't been for you and the Redskins, them hooded chance would have got me. Why can't I get back to town now? What are you holding me for? You're going to give Toto and me the facts of this affair. Eh? Huh? What do you mean? We learned by accident that those men intended taking you prisoner. While we waited outside the cafe, we heard the names of three other men mentioned. Judge Powers, Nate Bender, and Hawk Marlin. I want to know why all of you have been marked. Wait. Talk. Sure, I'll talk. I got nothing to hide. You heard them mention some other names, too, didn't you? Yes. Bill Kendall, Pete Stevens, and the others. They're the ones... Well, it just so happens they're killers. Not killers alone, but thieves into the bargain. Go on. Two years ago, they robbed my place. It was after hours when we was cleaning up. My strong box had a lot of cash from punches that had been paid off and wanted a safe place to put their money as well as gold dust from panners that came in from the hills. They stole the cash and dust? Stole it and killed the swamper that was cleaning the cafe. He tried to fight them off, so they let him have it. Then it wasn't you who lost money. It was the cowboys and the miners who left their valuables with you for safekeeping. Like blazes, I didn't lose nothing. I had $5,000 of my own in that safe. Why are the hooded men after Hawk Marlin? Well, Hawk Marlin heard the shots that killed the swamper. He saw them fellas when they made the getaway. It was his testimony that convicted them. Why are they after the sheriff and judge? The sheriff jailed him and the judge sentenced him. But what part did you play in all this? They seem to blame you most of all. That's because of the lying story they told in court. Yes? They tried to make the judge think I'd hired Hawk to rob my own safe. They told him that Hawk claimed to see them escaping because he'd seen them ride from town just about the time the whole thing happened and knew their riding away could be made to look as though they were guilty. They were convicted, huh? Yeah. But all they got was ten years of peace. That was because of the fact that Hawk was the only real witness against him. They should have hung for murder. Ten years. You know what that means, Jake? Yeah. That means they might have been able to secure a pardon. If they did... Then, then maybe it's them that grabbed me tonight. Them fellas wearing hoods claim to be friends of theirs. But there was four fellas sentenced for that killing. And there was four in the gang with war hoods. Stranger, I'll bet that's it. I'll bet they're one and the same. It seems logical. You got a reason for saying that? Otto found their camp late this afternoon. The four men were Bill Kendall, Judd Wayne, Todd Lang, and Pete Stevens. These fellows in camp addressed each other as Todd and Judd and Bill and Pete. Then you know where they're hid. A week until Nate Bender and have him picked up. No. But, but they're convicted killers. On top of that, they as much as said they were going to kill some more. We won't argue. Are you on their side? No. If I had been, I'd have known the details. It wouldn't have been necessary to bring you here to get information. Oh, well, now what? You were free to return to town. No? Right. Yeah. Stranger, I wish you'd tell me where them skunks are hiding out. Adios, Jake. All right, the hole's still there. <laughs> well, get this, mister. I'm going to tell Sheriff Bender you know where that camp is. Go ahead. He'll question you plenty. He'll have to find us. And he will. Adios, get up there. Up. Oh, what do you think, Kimasabi? We'll move camp before Jake can bring the sheriff. Ah. Pack up, Tonto. This talk with Jake has given me some new ideas. Ah. And what ideas? There's one thing Jake's story didn't explain. That the men who went to jail were after him because they claimed he and Hawk Marlin were guilty of the robbery and killing. Oh. They lied. They'd know Jake wasn't guilty. They'd have no reason to want revenge. Oh, that's right. We'll pack up in a hurry. Ah. And where we go, what we do... I want the truth of that robbery. The next day, everyone in Canfield and the surrounding district talked of the hooded men and their threats. 
There were, however, two who spoke in privacy. They were Jake Wattles and his employee, Hawk Marlin. They met in the evening in a private room at the rear of Jake's cafe. Marlin, we got to figure what we're going to do. Well, what are we going to do? Whatever it is, it's got to be blamed soon. I've been on edge all day waiting for them hooded men to grab me off. The thought of spending the night all alone in my place makes me downright scared. What's happened to your nerve? Given an even break, I'll face anybody. But how can you fight, fellas, when you don't even know where they're at? I'm hoping the sheriff will look at him. He didn't find that mask man you told him about? Well, the masked man and the Indian moved their camp. But maybe he'll run into them sooner or later. And when he does, he'll make him tell where Kendall and his pards are hanging out. You seem sure the hooded men are the Kendall outfit. I am sure. Couldn't be anyone else. Jake, I want a drink. Yeah. Go out and tell the barkeep to give him my special bottle. Right. Uh, bring it back here. Good idea. Hey, this door's locked on the other side. Locked? Oh, maybe a waiter locked it. Forgot we were in here. Uh, you was that back door. Go around the front. All right, Jake. I will. Hold it! What? Come on, fellas. Hey. Sit still, Jake. Yes, sirs. And my pards. You remember Todd and Pete and Judd here, don't you? It was you that wore them hoods last night. Uh-huh. But not tonight. We already picked up the judge and the sheriff. Now all we want, you and Hawk. <laughs> this time, the masked man can't help you. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Unknown to Bill Kendall and his companions, the Lone Ranger had been watching when the quartet entered the rear room of the cafe. Then he raced to the place where Toto waited. Oh, sir, hold oh, oh. You come plenty fast, Toto. What matter? Cinch up, Toto. We're riding. Ah. Uh-huh. And where we go? Bill Kendall and the others have taken Judge Powers and Sheriff Bender. And they just now took Waddles and Hawk Marlin. We hurry, we might reach the hideout first. Uh, you see him? Yes, we'll go to their camp. Huh? You ready? Good. One fellow. Get him up. Come. Toto and the Lone Ranger swept across country through the night on their powerful stallions, heading for the hideout of the Hooded Four. As they burst through a thicket of underbrush, they came upon a clearing where in the darkness... Two securely bound figures were dimly visible, their backs to a tree. Oh, sir, oh, 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 Bless you, fellas. You can't get away with this. You better let me and the judge go. Easy, big foot. Come on, Toto. Uh-huh. Take him. Are you Sheriff Bender? Who do you think I am? You sure? Say, you're not the same man. Judge, this is a masked man in the redskin. This is the critter Waddle spoke of. Who are you? I've been looking for you. Cut their ropes, Tonto. Uh, you going to help us? Right. Then why didn't you come and tell me where those crooks were hid? I could have caught them. Uh, hands free now. Their feet. Uh, he picks them. Yeah, hurry. You've got to get away before they come back. You're not going anywhere, Judge. You're being untied, but you're staying right here. What? Just what I thought. 
You are on their side. You're a crook just like the others. You'd both better rub your wrists. It'll help restore your circulation. Stranger, siding with killers makes you just as bad as they are. Under the law, you're an accessory... Walk around a bit. That will help. I'm talking. You listen to what I say. Everybody concerned in this will pay for it. Just as sure as shooting. That means you and the engine, too. Not so fast, Sheriff. Now, don't try to... You've decided that Tonto and I are helping the men who captured you. I get this straight. We're on your side. Indeed. Yes. I want some information. Hmm. What about? How well did you know Wayne, Stevens, Lang, and Kendall before the cafe robbery? Well, didn't know him at all. Thought I did, but it was proved I didn't. Was the stolen money recovered? No, but... I didn't think so. Now, about Jake Waddles, how well did you know him? Mm, Plenty well. Was he a man you'd trust? Well, I... What do you say, Judge? His reputation was shady. If you're thinking he and Hawk framed the defendants, I can assure you that the trial was fair and just. Oh, I believe you gave them as fair a trial as possible. You could be guided only by facts and statements made by the witness. You sound as though you think the four were innocent. I hope to learn the truth before morning. Kendall and his gang were convicted. Their trial was fair. And they captured the judge and me. They'll have to pay for abducting us. Judge... If you'd been certain they were guilty, you'd have given them longer terms. Isn't that true? Well, I... You'd have sentenced them to hang for the murder of that swamper, wouldn't you? No, see here, You're not a man to let killers off with a short prison term. That's neither here nor there. Now, listen to me. If you two have courage, we may be able to learn some surprising things. Courage to do what? What are your plans? I wonder if you two men have nerve enough to die. It was a little later when the four men who had captured Waddles and Hawk Marlin neared their camp after a roundabout route from town. What do you fellas figure on doing with us? Don't ask so many questions, Jake. You'll find out soon enough. Yeah, plenty soon. You're going to kill us? Any good reason why we shouldn't? Didn't you and Waddles try to get us hung? Jake, you got to make him let us go. you got to do something. Hey, Jackhead, what can I do? you got cash. Buy him off. I don't want to die. Quit whipper. Both of you, shut up. Come on, cut to the right here. We're almost to camp. Come on, boy. Get along. Now watch out for this slope. Where about you got the judge and the sheriff? In camp. You'll soon be with them. There's a camp. I'm clearing ahead. Now look, fellas. I tell you Jake, that... you can't talk your way out of this, so shut up before we gag you. Here we are, Rena. Oh, 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 all right, climb down. That goes for you, too, Hawk. Hit the ground. All right, all right. Don't shoot. I've been waiting for you. Where, who's that? Where is he? You were longer than I expected. Oh, there he is, the masked man. You. Get him up, first, mister. Put those guns away. You don't need them for me. No, we don't, huh? Tie him up, boys. Right. Take his guns. Take one step toward me and Tonto will shoot. Huh? Tonto. Me here, behind the ridge. The ridge. Good for you, mister. How do you mean your friend to start shooting? Get me and Hawk out of this and I'll pay you handsome. Guess again, Jake. They're in it for keeps this time. What do you mean? Bill, put your gun away and listen to me. I've learned a lot since last night. And I guess I've changed sides. The fact that the judge and sheriff are right where you left them should be proof of that. Okay. Gosh, Bill, so they are. What are you up to, mister? Who are you? Let's put the guns away before we talk. Come on out, Toto. We needn't hold a gun on them any longer. I'll meet put gun away. But other fella, still hold gun. Bill and his friends won't make trouble for us. They know we're on their side. And to think I trusted you. I told everyone you was on the side of the law. Now you're throwing him with these convicted Shut killers. Up, Jake. All right, put your guns away, boys. But be ready to draw fast. If you say so. Now then, mister. I'd like to know why you're on our side. Isn't it possible that I'd have personal reasons for wanting these men punished? The polecats frame you too. What do you men plan to do with your prisoners? Well, we... Uh... Kill them? Oh, gosh, no. Uh, we... Why not? You have all four of them here. We're not... Shut up, Pete. Doesn't matter. You four go ahead with your plans. Our, uh... Our plans? That's what I said, Kendall. You brought the judge and sheriff here and left them tied to trees over there near the edge of the clearing. Now you've returned with Jake and Marlin. You captured the four men for a purpose. Go ahead. Do what you intended to. When you're finished, I'll take over. All right. 
Bring Jake and Hawk along, boys. Get going, Jake. No, please, boys, don't kill us. Give me a chance. We'll give you a chance. We'll also give you something you won't forget. Yeah. Set him on the ground right next to Judge and Sheriff. Go on, sit down. Yeah. You heard what Bill said? Well, Judge, Sheriff. What are you going to do with this? You won't get away with this, Kendall. Sheriff, two years ago, you put the four of us under arrest. Judge, you sentenced us to ten years. You got off lightly. We busted out. We come here because we were framed. All four of you were in on it. And you're going to admit it. I never framed a man in my life. Neither did the sheriff. Jake, you talk first. Isn't it true you had Hawk break into your cafe and kill that swamper? No, no. That's a lie. You're just trying to trick us. You figure we'll confess. Then you can have the sheriff and the judge's witnesses. That's right, Jake. That's what they're trying to do. Bill, they heard you say you didn't want to kill them. They know you four men are not killers. Stand aside. What, what are you going to do? You'll find out. Now, hold on, mister. Kendall, what's the difference whether or not they confess? We brought them here to punish them, to get square with them. Come here, Jake. No, hey, wait. Get on your feet. Take it standing up. We'll carry out this punishment in a hurry. No, no, wait a minute. Please, mister. Step back a few paces. No, no. Put that gun away. Bill, we can't let him do this. You'll not stop him. Go on, Jake. Back away from me. You'll, you'll shoot me. Do as I said. Now, Judge. Those two, they're untied. This way, Sheriff. They got loose. They're getting away. I'll stop them. Oh. Oh. Drilled them. The judge and the sheriff. They dropped them both. Don't try to make a break, Marlin. Don't, don't shoot me. Don't shoot. Keep an eye on these two. We want to hear them talk before we shoot them. Uh, gosh, mister, you, you're too handy with your guns. Uh, I'd rather let those two go free than shoot them. That's what I thought, Kendall. But I had different ideas. Now, uh, we'll concentrate on these two. Come here, Hawk. Yeah. Stand up there beside your friend, Jake Waddle. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. But please don't kill me. If one of you wants to talk, this is the chance. He might show leniency to a witness just the way they do in court. Wait. What do you want to know? Before we get into my business, we'll clear up that robbery and murder in your cafe. Now, which of you wants to do the talking? I'll talk. I'll talk, mister. I'll tell you all about shut it. Shut up, Hawk. I won't shut up. This man's not fooling. You saw what the judge and sheriff got? I'll tell everything, mister. Jake planned that whole night. That's what I thought. Who stole the money? It was Hawk. He got the money, and he's the one that killed the swamper. You told me to. It was your idea, Jake. You know it was. You lie. Stealing the money was my idea. But I didn't tell you to shoot that man. You told me not to let anything get in my way. Well, listen, mister, you've got to believe me. Jake schemed everything. He even rigged up the evidence to frame four other men. Where are you? And, uh... You were the witness against the four? But Jake made me... Now, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You two have fallen all over each other, passing the blame. But it don't look to me like the judge and sheriff was even in on the frame-up. That, Kendall, the thing you had to know. That's why we planned it this way. Planned it? Planned what? The whole thing. And the sheriff. He's not dead. dead. Not even hurt. Oh, there's the judge. We heard everything. From here on, we'll take over. It was a frame-up. It was a trick. Why, the, the judge and sheriff heard us. Yes, yes. That's exactly what they were supposed to do. <laughs> you see, Kendall, before you got back, the masked man untied us so me and the judge could break away when he gave us the signal. <laughs> and we flopped to the ground when he fired over our heads. Yeah, why don't you let Hawk and Waddles know they had small chance? Well, by some... Well, you, you tricked Shut us. Shut up, Hawk. You and Jake aren't the only ones who were tricked. The four of us were just as sure as you that the masked man was a killer. Judge, uh, what about these four men who were unjustly sent to jail? A terrible mistake has been made, but it will be corrected. Kendall, is that what you wanted to hear the judge say? <laughs> it sure is. Good. Come on, Toto. Ah, now, but hold on. Wait a minute. We're not needed anymore. Is that a big fellow? Uh, uh, judge, sheriff, sure, I... there's a lot I don't savvy. Kendall, all you have to know is this. You and your friends will be cleared... Marlin and Wattles will face trial. And conviction. And their case will be different than yours. There'll be no doubt in my mind as to their guilt. What's the look? I'm stopped. Yeah, but that masked man. What did he have against the two? And he just wanted to get the truth. You see, he's the Lone Ranger.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.